a center of excellence is not just about building models. It's really about making sure that AI is adopted effectively across the organization. Welcome back to the Azure Essential Show. I'm Thomas, and today I'm joined by Ben Brower from Azure Marketing. We are exploring a topic that's becoming increasingly important as organizations look to scale their AI efforts, uh, and that's an AI center of excellence. Ben, great to have you here today. Thanks for having me, Thomas. So before we go into details, let's take a step back. Can you give us a quick overview of what a AI center of excellence is and how it helps organizations? Yeah, um, sure. So I, I think one of the th interesting things about um, the about AI is it's everywhere and everyone wants to do it. Everyone's got a proof of concept that they're doing. However, it's really hard for customers to really scale AI adoption. And so that's where the AI Center of Excellence uh, really helps to close that gap. Uh, we're going to make sure that customers have a dedicated cross-functional team that helps to structure, um, provide guidance, and really helps to do change management uh, by delivering so that you can deliver real business value. That makes sense. So it's just more than just a group of technical experts doing implementations and things like that. It sounds like the center of excellence plays a broader role in shaping how AI is actually used within the organization. Exactly. Uh, so a center of excellence is not just about building models. It's really about making sure that AI is adopted effectively across the organization. And so what it does is it provides guidance. Um, it um, provides um, innovation uh, capability. It makes sure that you're following certain uh, compliance requirements. Uh, and it makes sure that when you're adopting AI, that you're doing it responsibly and ethically. Uh, it's also really making sure that your business goals are aligned uh, to however you go about developing this AI. And so you really want to make sure that you have both the business decision makers and the technical decision makers involved. Okay, that makes sense. And so as more teams across the company start to experiment with generative AI, this obviously comes more and more into play and becomes more and more important. So let's zoom in now and break it down a little bit. Um, what the AI center of excellence could look like exactly. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so um, and, uh, the center of excellence um, is is usually made up of, uh, of, a, of a virtual team um, of multifunctional experts. And so uh, in this, in the same goes with a center of excellence for AI. So you're going to have, have a business strategy person involved. You're going to have someone in technical strategy. So this could be your architect or it could be uh, your CTO. Um, it could be someone who has applied AI experience. Um, so you have a team that's already done uh, some development of AI workloads and have put those into production. So you want to make sure that that, that experience is brought into the organization and then expanded across the organization. Uh, you want to make sure that the organizational culture, so change management, um, is uh, well instilled within the, the uh, overall organization. And then maybe the most important part to this is, and I shouldn't say most important, but certainly a key component of this is governance. Um, governance because you're governing not just how the workload is being put into production, but what sort of data is generated from these uh, from from the various models that uh, come from the, from this material from the prompting and the behavior of of these workloads. So, in terms of these five core focus areas you just mentioned, uh, I can imagine uh, all of that depends heavily on having the right people in place for this. So what kind of roles typically make up one of these teams? Yeah, you know, um, I, I think the, the it's definitely cross-functional, as I, as I mentioned. So you're probably going to have like a domain specialist um, who um, has um, a lot of understanding of that given domain. So a domain could be anything related to uh, the, the industry. Uh, it could be related to a particular uh, function. Uh, and it could also be related to how you interact with a given, a given set of uh, users. So 
though that domain specialist is, is extremely important. But you also need like data scientists and you need machine learning engineers and you'll need to have an understanding of how these different models are going to be used. And so that that additional persona is going to be required. Uh, and then finally, those other people, the people who who are interested in uh, change management and uh, responsible and ethical use of AI will also need to be involved in, in these uh, this cross-functional team. Okay, so you won't definitely have a team with the right mix of skills and perspectives if you do if you do this. Uh, when it comes to putting that team into place, is there a standard way to structure an AI center of excellence, or does that vary depending on the organization? Oh, it, it definitely depends on the organization. So if you have an organization that is already centralized or is already decentralized you will most likely have your center of excellence uh, be mirror that that sort of an uh, that sort of structure. Um, so you'll want to keep that in in mind. The most likely uh, thing that will happen though is that this will most will be a standalone team. Uh, the standalone team is is required mainly because you want to have uh, you want to be able to let people know where to go to, to find information, to, to understand what is the experience, what are the best practices. And so that really helps in the overall uh, organization's understanding and, and how to find information. Awesome. So there is no one size uh, fits all approach, basically, but the structure that still has to be uh, intentional of, your, of what you want to do. Once you have got your team in place, mm -hmm. um, and define the structure, what comes next? Well, yeah, you know, it, so so that's where the real work begins um, is uh, putting that strategy in motion. So I, I think one of the most important points here is, is that you have some early use cases, but that you begin developing these repeatable patterns uh, that are uh, going to be useful for your organization as a whole, but are based on your organization. So you wanna be able to ensure that there's continuous improvement uh, and that you're monitoring um, how things are going so that you can make adjustments along the way. Okay, that makes sense. That's a practical way to think about it. Uh, if someone is looking to dig in and learn more about the AI Center of Excellence, are there any resources you would recommend to help them get started? We just published an, an ebook uh, in June of 2025. I, I think that's probably the best place to start. Uh, it's not a step-by-step -step manual per se, but it's it's a great way to get a big picture set of questions answered. So things like, how does your organization succeed with Gen AI? How do you think about uh, your or the overall organization and strategy? Um, and what sort of cap technical capabilities do you need? Uh, and then if, if you need more guidance, more information, then you can start to drill into some of the more trusted frameworks that Microsoft brings. So the cloud adoption framework and the well-architected framework are both great um, uh, assets. Uh, both um, cover AI uh, in, in some way, um, either at the organizational level or at the workload level. Uh, and then uh, I would say the, the, the thing that's most important is, is to just get started. Um, so um, read the ebook. It's called Implementing a Center of Excellence for Generative AI. Uh, you can find that on our website, on the Microsoft website. Awesome. Thank you very much. This uh, ebook really sounds uh, incredibly useful. Um, is there anything else you would recommend for organizations that want to build skills and keep learning as they go? Yeah, you know, so there's there's a lot of really good resources out there. Microsoft actually has a learn path now for creating and managing an AI center of excellence. It's it's a three part module, uh, or there's three modules um, that um, basically goes into how to set up the the um, AI COE, um, how to uh, create a, a generative a, or Gen AI ops um, processes, and then finally how to uh, build well-architected workloads um, using AI. Uh, that really gives us something to build on and, and move forward uh, pretty fast. Uh, ben, this has been super helpful. Uh, thank you for joining us and breaking it all down. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. For everyone watching, you will find the links and all the resources we mentioned in the episode's description. 
Be sure to leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time on the Azure Essentials Show.